I'm Bob Duhamel, and today I'm going to answer a question from a viewer who goes by the name of Radios Antigos. And his question is essentially, why do we need a series resistor with a Zener diode? Well, let's take a look at what a Zener diode does and answer his question. So here's my thought experiment test circuit that I use to explain how Zener diodes work. I have a battery, a resistor, and our Zener diode. I don't need to really explain this in detail just for this quick video. I will make this a variable battery because we want to see how the Zener diode reacts to changing source voltages. And without explaining the physics of what goes on and going across the graphs like I do in my video below about Zener diodes, let's just say that this is a smart circuit that changes its resistance to whatever it takes to keep the voltage across it constant. So if we look inside that Zener diode, what do we have? We have a resistor, actually a variable resistor, and there's a voltmeter across that resistor. There we go. And inside we have a little green man who watches that voltmeter, but he has his hand on that variable resistor. And his instructions are to change that resistance to whatever it takes to keep that at Oh, let's say six volts. That's a common voltage for a Zener diode. So his instructions are change that resistance to whatever it takes to hold that constantly at six volts. So let's see how that works. Let's get the clutter out of the way here. So let's say that this is a 10 volt battery. It's variable so it can go up and down. And let's say that this particular diode, we look at its specs and it's rated at six volts. So it's going to change its resistance to whatever it takes to hold that voltage at 6 volts. It works best at 20 milliamps, and it can dissipate 1 watt. So there's our specifications for our Zener diode. So how are we going to design the circuit? We need to set this resistor here to be just the right resistor. So what do we have? Well, let's get this clutter out of the way. 6 volts, 20 milliamps, 1 watt. I'll write that over here to get it out of the way. 6 volts, 20 milliamps, 1 watt. So, what do we have? We expect to see 6 volts here, and that's not going to change. If I change this voltage here, the resistance of this diode is going to change to compensate to keep the voltage constantly at 6 volts. And what I want to do is make sure I have 20 milliamps going through there because that's the best nominal current to keep that at 6 volts. We want to have a nominal current of what? 20 milliamps. So how do we calculate this resistor? Well, it's pretty simple. Remember Kirchhoff's voltage law says that this voltage plus the voltage here must add up to our source voltage. So if we have six volts here and 10 volts there, that means we have four volts there. So now we know the voltage and the current and we can calculate that out. So I pull out my trusty calculator, four divided by point 0, 02 equals, and we want a 200 ohm resistor. And now once again, if this voltage goes up, I'm going to get a little more current. If it goes down, I'm going to get a little less current. But this does a pretty good job of compensating by changing its resistance to keep that very, very close to 6 volts. But if this changes its resistance to whatever it takes to keep it at 6 volts, why do I need that resistor for? Well, let's see what happens if I take it out. Let's remove our current here, and we're going to remove that resistance. And so now I have 10 volts here and 6 volts there. What's the problem with that? They're in parallel. What's the rule about parallel circuits? The voltage is the same. If I have 10 volts here, I must have 10 volts here. So this is going to try to compensate, but it's impossible. At least it isn't this whiteboard thought experiment, but of course, in reality, I've got some resistance in series with my source here. So there's our internal resistance or output impedance, depending on what kind of circuit it is. It's the same thing. We just, if it's a battery, we call it internal resistance. Virtually everything else, we call it output impedance. But we do have that bit of resistance there. And let's just say, um, let's say it's one ohm. So what do we have now? We have six volts here, 10 volts there, one ohm there. So Kirchhoff's voltage law says that the voltage here and the voltage across this resistor must add up to 10. So we have, if I can draw the lines, 4 volts across there. So how much current do we now have flowing through that Zener diode? 4 volts, 1 ohm, that means we have 4 amps. 
It's a little bit higher than 20 milliamps, I think. Well, what's the power rating? One watt. If we're exceeding one watt, we might let the smoke out of our diode. Let's see if we're exceeding one watt. Well, power is equal to voltage times current, so six volts times four amps. I should be able to do that in my head. That's gonna be 24 watts. Yep, smoke got out of the diode. So we need to have some current limiting for two reasons. One, without the current limiting, unless this happens to be a very, very high internal resistance or output impedance, we're going to let the smoke out of our Zener diode in the first place. And secondly, we do want to have the correct nominal current, which is based on what's our source voltage and what is our Zener diode voltage and the current. So once again, with this particular Zener diode, we want this current to be nominally about 10 milliamps, uh, 20 milliamps. So we need a resistor that will give us that 20 milliamps. Once again, if we ignore our internal resistance again, as we usually do because it's usually small enough to ignore. So now we have, once again, 6 volts, 10 volts. So 6 plus 4 volts adds up to 10. 4 volts divided by 20 milliamps gives us 200 ohms, and there is the proper setup for this particular Zener diode. So that's why we need this resistor, because we need to isolate the Zener diode from the power source, because it almost certainly has too low of an impedance for the diode, because it's going to allow too much current to flow through it, and we're going to let the smoke out. So actually, we do not need this if we are coming from a source that has a high enough internal resistance. So let's say, I'm just pulling this off the top of my head, we're coming off of a amplifier of some sort. And we need to hold this voltage at a particular voltage. Well, why not? There's input, there's output, could be an op amp. I'm not sure why I would want to do this, but who knows, that's a funny looking Zener diode there. There, that looks better. Well, if the output impedance of this amplifier is high enough, and an op-amp would almost certainly be, I've never measured the output impedance, but they can only give you so much current. An op-amp can give me max, you know, maybe 40 milliamps. Uh, that's probably not going to hurt it. Let's see. Let's put there again. 6 volts, 40 milliamps. So 6 volts times 40 milliamps is going to give me uh, about a quarter watt. So, yeah, no problem there. So you don't need the resistor if your voltage source has a high enough output impedance. I just thought of another place where we use Zener diodes where the resistor is not necessary. And this is something we don't usually see because it's inside integrated circuits. But here is a MOS transistor. I'll just draw it like that. So many different ways to draw a MOS transistor. And very frequently, they will have Zener diodes... hope I'm getting the orientation of these right, across their inputs to limit the voltage in case there's a, a, some static electricity we want to shunt that around. And so, yeah, I, got, I do have these backwards. There we go. Let's try that again. Trying to think on the fly and not as smart as I thought I was. There we go. So there's the diodes there, and that blocks the current from flowing this way. But if we do get some static electricity on here, these will keep the voltage from going high enough to actually damage the transistor. So that's usually inside the case. We don't usually see that. Sometimes that's on other circuits too that have static sensitive inputs. So do we need resistors here? No, because the impedance of the circuit somewhere else is high enough that we don't need them. If we did, they would be built into the circuit. So. Just draw that there too. So they might be there depending on what's going on inside the circuit. Once again, as long as the current is limited, then we don't need those resistors. So final answer is why do we need the series resistor for a Zener diode? And the answer is that we need to limit the current through here to something less than the current that would cause the power to go above its power rating but mainly we want to limit the current to its nominal current, whatever that is, to the test current or whatever the spec sheet says the test current is. 
we want that current to be close to that current, so we need a resistor in there to control that current. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible, and a big thank you to everyone for watching.